this is Larry Weeks, President of Fulton Art Fair, and we're at Jamaica Arts and Learning Center. And this is the show uh, called Our Roots, where Fulton Art Fair artists and other artists have expressed their connection to their family roots and uh, historical content. This is a show. Um, so we're, we're going to take a walk around the room and show you the individual pieces and the artwork. This next piece is by uh, Otto Niels, and it's called Nature, Natural Woman Rising. And this is a collage. And what he's depicting is uh, the female tree of our ancestral roots and our heritage. OK, this piece is, is called the African Diva Catalyst, and this is by Margaret Rose Van Dries. And what she's depicting, again, is African heritage here. And these pieces that she has reference African-American performers, and um, what she does is also uh, make an African, connect, African connection by relating, this piece relates to Donna Summers, and she um, puts an African mask on, on the, uh, uh, portrait of Donna Summers and also African reference by the cowrie seeds, cowrie beads. Yeah. This piece is by myself, Larry Weeks, and it's called Lost Roots. And uh, I put this piece in because I don't have a lot of connection to my ancestral roots in Jamaica and in Montserrat. So this kind of represents my disconnection from my roots. Okay, this piece is by Miss Charlotte Key, and it's called Both Sides. And so she created a piece that tells about some of her family heritage. She has included in this collage mixed media piece images of her uh, past, uh, her, her, her cousin who just recently passed, and she also has images of her grandchildren and other family members. So this is another uh, showing connection to various roots in her family. This piece is by Alethea Sap Jimenez and it's called Heritage. And so what Alethea is showing here is she's connecting to the creative roots in her family and the heritage that, that she got in the energy and skills that have been passed down to her by her family. Okay, this piece is by Donna Mesa and it's called Tabanka Series Firmly Rooted Veneer and All. And what Donna has created is a collage piece, mixed media piece, and she's incorporated a picture of herself and uh, she's also included uh, documents that reference her, her family and uh, immigration. So she's creating a kind of a record of her family history. This piece is by Valerie Williams and she's referencing her, her family roots that come from St. Kitts. And this piece is called We Come From Afar. And what she's depicting here is the uh, sugar cane sugarcane crops and growing and how uh, our people were worked in the sugarcane fields in the, in the Caribbean. Okay, this piece is by Melvin Isaac and it's called Picking Cotton on the Plantation. So Melvin reflect, is reflecting our heritage of working on uh, cotton plantation farms. So this is a, a, a firmly rooted in our culture and it's an important part of the American experience. And what America was built upon was the, the, the enslavement of people in the cotton fields. Okay, this piece is by Charnay Betton and it's called Sankofa I and I. And Charnay has referenced the Sankofa bird that is important to looking back to Africa. And so she has incorporated an image of a swan and also uh, looking back to the plantations and looking back to Mother Africa. Okay. All right. This piece is an linoleum cut print, 
and it's by Dr. Myra Brown Green, and it's called Converging Culture, or Cultural Collide. And what she has depicted here is three faces, and they represent the human self, the ego, and the divine self. And these come together, and there's um, several um, African symbols incorporated in the uh, design that reference um, energy in Africa. Okay, this piece is by Julia Justo, and its title is Who Gets to Determine Who Belongs Where? And what Julia has created here is a representation of the American flag, and within it she's incorporated uh, little uh, sayings and statements by immigrant people. And um, what this helps to, to convey is that all these people from different cultures are an important part of the American experience. This piece by Glory B is called The Burning of Bentonville. And uh, in February and March of 1865, after the Civil War, the, um, the Bentonville, South Carolina uh, cotton fields and warehouses were burned and uh, people were afraid for their future. So this is important or that's ingrained in our, in our culture is this experience of, of feeling uh, lost. All right, these two pieces are by uh, Beryl Bembo. And uh, she has given two pieces. One is as a video photo montage reflecting her family history. And the other is a um, print of uh, reflecting upon her history, family history from New Orleans and, and the jazz experience that, that she has experienced in her life. This piece is by Franz F. de Seuss, and it's called Bobo Number no. Six. And what Franz has uh, portrayed in this piece is his experience as uh, a Haitian American in living in the urban society of New York. This piece is by artist Pamela Allen, and it's called Dr. Bird, Dr. Bird Number no. Three. And this is a hummingbird that's native to her, her, her country of Jamaica. And it's called the, also called the God Bird. And so she is um, depicting the hummingbird and trying to show how the wings create kind of an infinity uh, cycle. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alethea Sapi Menes, and I am the artist of this fabulous piece of artwork that you see before you. It is my journey. It is my journey, and it could be anybody's journey at the same time. So I hope you understand the story and create your own story at the same time, how you can relate to the history of being creative, being part of a multicultural society that we live in. So we're going to continue to look at this piece and look at all the symbolism that is involved in this piece as well. Once again, my name is Alethea Sapi Menes. Enjoy the peace, create your own story. As a little girl, I would watch my mom sew clothing and curtains, which hung in our home. Then my father would create beautiful, beautiful works of art on canvas. As I grew older, I realized I was part of a very creative line of people. Watching my sister draw as I was sitting on the edge of the bed, my brother loved to use his hands to make things. I also realized most of my aunts, uncles, grandparents also share this talent of creation. How blessed I felt to inherit these gifts and to share them with my children and my grandchildren. We all have inherited something from our past that we will all have to share with loved ones or family. This is how I honor them with this painting becoming and because this is part of my heritage. Hello, we're at the studio of Mr. Ken Wright. This is the piece that Ken submitted to the 
J-Cow show, the Our Roots uh, show. And um, Ken's gonna, gonna, gonna tell us what, how he addressed the theme. Hello, Ken. Hi, how you doing? Let me get, hi, Ken. Hi, Larry. Okay. okay. <laughs> this piece um, is called Ancestral Tree. And what it talks about is um, the common ancestors that the human race has that came from Africa. Um, this happened, on, I wrote a piece for it, but I'm not going to read it for you now. But it, it speaks to, in ancient times, um, Africans were actually responsible for populating the earth. And everybody has African, female African mitochondrial DNA in their body everybody and this piece talks about ancestors that's what these are these are people there's three eyes here two noses two mouths which are also the eyes for this bottom piece which means that we're connected through ancestral the roots are going to africa this represents an ancestor here female and a male these symbols represent the earth when it was younger than what it is now uh, this represents Mars, this represents Venus, the Sun, the Moon, and this represents the unknown factors in the universe that come together to form the planets. And of course, this is the Earth here with Africa. So this talks about the connection of the ancestors um, to Africa to the current times. So it's the ultimate in roots. Hello everybody, I'm Larry Weeks and I'm the president of Fulton Art Fair. We're Yay. here today at the uh, Sky Blue Gallery and we're uh, having an artist talk about the current exhibition that's at J. Cal called Our Roots. And this presentation was uh, created in response to the climate at that time, which was uh, a, a climate of separate, uh, separatism and denying immigration rights. And um, so uh, this piece, this, this collection was, was put together to so people can show their immigrant roots and, and the contributions to the, to the United States. So um, now we're just going to uh, go one by uh, each artist at a time. And then um, if they are present, then they can um, speak about their uh, pieces. So now we're gonna share the, the slideshow presentation. So this is a few, uh, I don't uh, know if Ken is here. I guess he's not here. So Ken uses a process called fused glass. And these pieces of glass are fused in a kiln 
for often 18 to 24 hours and it melts the glass and he creates these, these pieces. This is um, Mr. Otto Neal's work. Uh, Otto is a founding member of Fulton Art Fair. He's been a member of Fulton Art Fair for 63 years. Amen. And this piece, he's celebrating Mother Africa and also referencing the DNA of the mitochondrial root of um, the African heritage. Mm -hmm. This piece is by Margaret Rose, Dr. Dr. Margaret Rose Vendries, and she's referencing uh, African history and relating it to current uh, history in the United States by, uh, she has a collection of pieces where she's taking popular African-American uh, performers and, and putting uh, African mask on them. <laughs> I don't know where this guy is. This is uh, Larry Weeks. So um, <laughs> like I said in, in the little video, it, it kind of depicts the lost roots that that the connections that I have because I was born here in New York City and uh, never got to travel. My parents, my my mother's side is from Jamaica, and my father's side from Montserrat, and yeah. I have no connection to those family histories. So that's a history that's lost to me and something that I need to discover. Oh, hello. <laughs> That's me, Cheryl Key here. Um, when we when we talked about doing this show and we was talking about roots, I don't need to be on screen. I know yes, what I look. I know what I. I know what I look like. Everybody else want to know what you look like. <laughs> Hi, y'all. <laughs> when we was talking about doing this roots show, I had been working on this piece for for quite a while. And um, my cousin passed while I was working on it. So if you look at my piece, I have a picture of my cousin, which he's on my father's side. And then all that he's on the left and all the way to the right. That, that, that old black man in the whiter, that's my grandfather. That's on my mother's side. And in the middle, I got me and my granddaughter. So I got my... Both, both sides of the family and where we at now, the present, at past, present, and future. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. And it's not for sale. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay, uh, Alethea Sapimena, she, yeah, she was not going to be here today, so that we played the little video clip earlier where uh, she's speaking about her piece. I love everybody's work. Yeah, I do. Uh, Donna Mason, I guess she's not present. So Donna depicted a experience in her, in her, in her past. That's her in that small photograph there. And um, this re reflects her connection to her Jamaican past. Now we have Miss Valerie Williams. Hi, I'm Valerie Williams, and my piece shows a little picture of my mom's ancestry. Her family is from St. Kitts in the Caribbean. It's one of the Leeward Islands. And my family was able to come to this country because of family members working the cane fields. It was hard work, it was arduous work, it was very, 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 very dangerous work. People lost their arms, their legs, mm. and they died from doing this work. But it was hard work and they did get paid for it. Not much, but they got paid for it. And of course the economy was built on our backs. Mm -hmm. So this is just a simple picture showing two people in the field, one cutting and the other gathering.
Next, we have Mr. Melvin Isaac, and Melvin is here. So, Melvin, you speak about your piece. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Melvin Isaac. And uh, this piece right here is a collection, a series of pieces that I'm doing. And uh, first of all, the reason why I'm doing this piece and a few other pieces because it's an educational piece that I'm doing a pop up art to the uh, community. Uh, start with the Brooklyn community in East New York. And basically, this is letting the people know what our ancestors, what we went through, how we was forced here, and how we was used to build the uh, industrial of this country by picking cotton. So I figure they need to know that uh, and they need to educate because this is not in the school. They don't teach this in school. The guy on the horse is overseas. He's one of us. He's a black person that they put on a horse to control our ancestors while they pick on cotton. And if they do anything wrong, he will report back to his master. So this piece right here, it, it touches everybody. It touches me. Everyone that sees it, they, 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 it keeps telling me we need this type of stuff in the community to show our young kids. So basically, that's what I did this. So it's going to be a, a series of artwork going to the community and to teach uh, everyone whatever event that allows me to come. And this is what I would be teaching them, showing them about their, their uh, culture. Thank you, Melvin. You're welcome. This next is a lovely piece by Miss Charnay Benton, and it's an engraving. And here's Charnay. Hey. Hello there. Let me just adjust quickly. Greetings, all. Oh, we just lost you. Come on back. Hi there. Sorry about that. Greetings, everyone. My name is Charnay Betton. Um, the piece that you see here is called Sankofa Dreams. Um, it was created in 2014 uh, when I was actually preparing to study abroad in Ghana. Um, and it just so happened at that time, I was also, uh, like many have said before, looking into my history, my roots. Um, part of my family is from Jamaica and um, a large percentage of my family is from uh, South Carolina. Um, and so what you see here is, is me just, um, and this is an etching, by the way. Uh, I, I was looking at the Sankofa bird, but also some of the, the birds and, and the culture that you would find both in South Carolina as well as Jamaica. And, um, through the research, it was also apparent that there's so much similarities um, between South Carolina, uh, Gullah Geechee, you know, um, uh, land, Jamaica, and West Africa. So you see the woman on the upper left-hand corner. She has a flower in her hair, um, and she is a Caribbean. She could be a Caribbean woman. She could be a Southern woman from the Gullah area, or even an African woman, because a West African woman, the features are very similar, the dialects, um, the history of, of the rice plantations, um, you find very similar um, uh, land um, in, in all three areas. So you see a man uh, moving, um, a drying some fabric and, and working in the field there. Yeah, so that's a little bit. Um, you can find more of my art uh, on Instagram at Charnay's Art, Charnay's underscore art, as well as my website, charnaysart.com. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Charnay. Okay, Dr. Myra Brown Green, when she's not here today, um, this is a, a, a linoleum block print. 
And um, like uh, I said earlier in the video that um, she depicted uh, various facts, faces of culture in, in the piece. Mm, this is nice. This is a piece by Julia Justo. Hi, Julia. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> thank you, Larry, and thank you, Jamaica Center. Uh, this piece is titled Who Gets to Determine Who Belongs Where? And it's made of um, small pieces of fabrics uh, of various designs representing all different cultures living in New York at this time. I used uh, my own clothing to make this fabric, uh, clothing that I bought I, and used during my time as an immigrant in America. And I invited immigrants to write about their stories and their hopes for the future. And I included the writings in small bags attached to the flag. So this is just a, an alternate flag. She got Mickey in there. Thank you, Julia. Thank you. Miss Glory B. Oh, well, that's me. Hello, everybody. I'm Glory B. And today we are reviewing and going over my painting, The Burning of Bennisville. So a lot of people don't know the story of Bennisville, South Carolina and Columbia, South Carolina, right after the Civil War. Uh, the Union soldiers burned many cotton fields, a cotton warehouse, and they just took barrels to the street and they were burning cotton. And it was said that um, they wanted to cover up this story. A lot of people don't know that the Union soldiers had done this and they terrorized the people of South Carolina. And my family is from Bennisville, South Carolina. So telling this story of these two young girls watching this fire, and watching these powerful men burning, you know, parts of their homeland, this is all they knew. This is all they knew at the time. So telling this story, this could be my ancestors. This probably was my ancestors that heard of this and the fear that they could have been experiencing from who were supposed to be the good guys. You know, the Union soldiers won the army. Why would they be doing such a thing? So to tell this story was extremely important because it is a part of my roots, you know? And another part about this that makes it, um, that I highlighted was the fact that they were supporting one another. If you guys ever been to South Carolina, it's a lot of love, it's a lot of support, it's a lot of uplifting. And this is also with the painting highlights that no matter what the citizens of South Carolina went through, they always had each other's back and uplifted and were there for one another. Thank you, Gloria. Nice no story. problem, thank you. Uh, oh, that's a nice piece. Beryl, Beryl's piece, uh, she depicted her heritage in, in um, Music. New Orleans and also her connection to, to New Orleans uh, founding jazz band. And um, so that's what her piece involves. And also Beryl also submitted a, a video that um, uh, also relates to, to her family heritage. So if we have time, maybe we can play the video at, at the end. Good time. Yeah, uh-huh. Wanna play now? Am I? <laughs> this piece is, is by uh, Franz de Sous, and he is of Haitian uh, heritage. And um, this piece, depicts his, his uh, feelings about being an immigrant in New York. I thought I saw people in there. There's people in there. Okay. 
And this is a piece by Miss Pamela Allen. Is Pamela here? No. Okay, so this is a, a dacta bird that's, that's native to her native Jamaica. And um, that's what her image depicts. I thought it was Pamela. Pamela, okay. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's the end, end of the slideshow. So, um, like I said, this, this body of work was designed to allow artists to express their, their feelings about immigration in, in the United States. And I just want to throw it out if anybody wants to add about anything about their feelings about the current status of immigration. Immigration, we've been immigrants. We've been, we always been immigrants. We immigrants. So what the hell? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are, are we immigrants? No, we're not immigrants. Why are we not immigrants? We're, we're, they, they, they took us from where we, I thought we were just. Immigrants usually reply, ref, replies to someone who came here willingly. We well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll speak, Larry. If that's okay. Uh, again, I'm Glory B. Hey guys, um, what I realized about this piece is that we definitely need to see each other as human beings instead of immigrants. It should be people. We should be looking at each other as people, no matter where we're from. If we put the human factor in first, I think we'd be much more open-minded about how to move forward as far as placement as far as accepting each other um we have to bring it back that to see people as people because what i'm seeing lately is that people are not being treated humanely and that should come first and i i did well um i also wanted to comment that you know a lot of history gets erased um, you know, the, the lion is the one that tells the story and, um, sorry, I'm moving around. Uh, the lion is the story and, and I think one story that often not spoken about is the native story and, and that black, I'm sorry, yeah, black people. Okay. Um, some of us were also native to this land and not all of us are, uh, were, were taken that there was a story before uh, slavery that is often not, not spoken of. And there's a story that continues. We are great people, um, all of us. And I love that this show not only uh, highlights our each of our individual stories, our, our bloodline, but also shows how connected we all are. There's so many similarities in each piece. Yeah. Do you think they're asking to turn up their volume? Either I'm going deaf or all these volumes are lower. Yeah, I 100% uh, agree to both uh, Gloria and Shawnee uh, because each one of y'all are uh, 100% correct. And that is the reason why I'm doing the pop up because to engage into a conversation, we, we need to you know, look at each other as a, a one whole human. Uh, and not separate because once we're in this situation or trouble, we seem to start to divide each other. But uh, I really agree with Gloria because we, we are human first. We have to look at it that way. We loving people, caring, understanding. And once we get into a situation, we have to look at that human side first and think and don't don't start thinking nothing other than that just reach out and help the best way we can because we got to support each other at all cause and we still gonna go through a lot because so much racism around uh it's been this way is ingrained in people's lives and their blood and they, and their ancestors so it's never going to change and so we have to continue fighting that situation especially in the immigration situation so yeah you know, it, it uh that that is that is one of number one reason why I'm doing the pop up because a lot of people said we need this. We, even though I have some of the stuff that's there, 
that I want to be talking about and people be running from it. They don't want to hear certain things, but they got to hear. They got to, see, especially the kids. They got to know what happened. We have a story, and we all stuck together, especially when we was picking cotton and ancestors. Uh, we went through. We changed our language and codes to get out of that. So we all have a story, but we got to tell that story, and we stuck together no matter what. Underground Railroad, we have to let them know what we went through. And some of us was afraid. They didn't want to leave because of that, you know. But uh, we, we finally broke that chain and look where we at. And we continue on. So that's what I have to say. The good piece. And the great piece. Uh, your piece, you um, included a lot of um, comments by um, different people. Can you are there different uh, immigration backgrounds in, in the people that you included? Yeah, well, when when our ancestors was enslaved, it was came through a lot of different, you know, because once we was from the continent of Africa, uh, the way we was forced here, you know, they were just grabbing and some of us were sold by our own people. Yeah, I want to bring uh, Julia's comments into this, Melvin. Mm -hmm. Julia, can you, you know, like yeah. I said, you, you had a lot of uh, the comments in the flag piece that um, can you, are there are yeah. people of different immigrant backgrounds? Yes, I think it's very important that we acknowledge the contribution of all this. Um, underrepresented group uh, or under the represented groups if we compare um, the resources and, and access to to resources that we don't get because uh, we are minorities and we are still part of this country and we all contribute so to me, it's important to hear all the voices because for many years we were listening to just a small group of white men mm. and that they that had control of the mainstream culture, the mainstream media. And the problem with that is that they, that distorts our vision of the world, the, the vision of uh, the society of, or the country we live in. So it's very important to listen to all the voices, indigenous people, Latin American people, immigrants, black people, because we all make this country. And yeah, okay. unfortunately- yeah, I, I see, yeah, it's important yes. that we listen to, to get the different points. What does everybody feel is the role of the artists in, in making change. Truth. Charlotte, you want to speak? Oh, you, oh, you I, I just right. said truth. I'm on okay. my <laughs> so, Gloria? Yes. Um, what, what do you feel the role of the artist is to to make change? Or how to make change? I've, I've always said since, since I'm self-taught and you know, a lot of my art comes from my spirit and comes from me listening to what I'm supposed to create. I have a responsibility as an artist, you know, to paint these things that are affecting the people, um, that are affecting the activists, that are affecting my community, other communities. The artist is responsible for telling the story, but the way that we tell it through color, the way that we tell it through brush strokes, People are listening by their eyes. They're using their eyes in order to get our story, get the story of what's happening. Artists are supposed to give you their perspective of what's happening, but tell the story. Every time in history, when there are people fighting for their rights or fighting to um, say that I belong, there's an artist that is there painting. Artists are painting. Artists are creating music. 
you know, about what's happening. There's Josephine Baker's, there's Jacob Lawrence's, there's Glory B's that are out here. You know, we're painting these stories so that people understand that this is currently happening. This has happened in the past, but that you are not powerless. I think artists show people that you have power in yourself, but you have to feel it. You have to see it. It's not just about accepting all of the time. So artists will show you, yes, this is happening to you, but your story is important and you can control the story and you can fight for yourself. If we don't paint the art, a lot of people won't have that power. They won't have that perspective. They won't be able to see that I can do this. I can survive. I'm a survivor just by us painting every day. Okay, thank you, Valerie. Uh, Would you like to thank you, thank you. address that you issue? Like that's not right. But um, to add to what Gloria was saying, um, a picture is worth a thousand words. And since uh, people in control have decided that the only history that should be taught in schools reflects a specific group of people. And the Holocaust story, the story of nations of people from Africa who were enslaved will not be told in schools and how we were kept from doing things. I mean, actual plans, Jim Crow, Ku Klux Klan, et cetera will not be taught in, in some of these schools, like in Texas. It is easier to just show people pictures. And since our educational system is somewhat limited, a number of people can't read, but they can see a picture. Mm -hmm. So this is one way to get around the forces who are in control. Okay, you can turn it back. <laughs> Okay, so um, I think, you know, this was a very interesting show and it, and it allowed people to, to voice the, their roots. My, my point of view is, yes, the artist has to be responsible for, for documenting history and, and uh, invoking change. And that's one of the responsibilities that I think is very important for, for artists to do. And uh, hopefully this allowed some of us to express our heritage and, and our, um, our feelings. Um, so, uh, yeah. No fake art. Like fake news, we don't do no fake art. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> they got fake news, why they ain't got fake art? <laughs> Julia, give it, Julia, give us a little back background where you where you're from, and because you know you're not everybody else is is a Fulton Art Fair member, and we we know them a little more intimately. I like you to to just yeah. give us a little background where you're from. And, uh... I'm from Argentina. I'm I'm mestiza. I'm half indigenous and half Italian. Uh, well, in Argentina, almost everybody is half Italian. At the same time that immigrants were coming here to America, they were going to Argentina. So I came to New York uh, 20 years ago to study English for two months, and I love New York. I, I was in love with a with cultural life here. Uh, the museums, the gallery. I used to live in, in Europe too, in Rome, and the level of the museums here in New York are at the same uh, level as, as in Europe. So I love the city and that's why I decided to stay here. And I just traveled to Argentina once a, a year but um, so that, that's my, my story, pretty much. And my work focuses on issues of social justice because, as you said, um, we have an obligation, artists. We have a voice. What, what to use it? I mean, art is a powerful tool that can bring awareness. So once people are aware, of um, situations, they can they can act 
they can ask their political representatives to bring change and, and demand this change because we vote for them. So I think that's a, a very important uh, role that artists have in society, this uh, bringing awareness to, okay. to issues of social challenge. Thank you, Julia. Interesting. Thank you, Julia. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if we can show the, uh, the video. Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? Is there a journalist video? Yeah. Okay. And thank you, Ben. We know you're back there someplace, but thank you so much. <laughs> Ben's our technical guy from J.Cal, y'all, if y'all didn't know who Ben is. Yeah. We just had it. We just had some intermission music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for Valerie, if that's okay, Larry. I'm sorry. I have a question for Valerie while you do that. Okay. Um, I want to know how long her piece took. It looks, it's so detailed. I want to know how long it took her to do it. Yes. Oh, um, well. It took about a week and a half because I kept doing it over. Mm. Every time I decided I had to do something else, I had other people and I erased them. And I had uh, water in the background and I took that out. Mm. And then I added the, um, the mountains because St. Kitts has mountains. Okay, I love it. Uh, Ben has the video. He's going to share the video now. All right, so uh, it seems we can't get the video to run. So um, we're going to call it. We're going to call it a day. And I thank everyone for attending. And um, oh, I'm muted. I'm sorry, I'm talking, but I'm muted. All right, um, we're having technical difficulties uh, showing the video. And so um, I guess uh, we're going to call it a day. And I thank everyone for attending. And uh, it was an uh, enjoyable experience. And uh, we're going to say good afternoon. Have a nice weekend, guys. Be safe. <laughs>